Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our Lexus IS 250. Uh, last time we got everything apart, we got our front door on there to see how it fit. I went and picked up our other door, so let's get it on here and see how it fits, see what we need to pull and what we need to replace. Let's get started. We'll start with putting our clamps on our frame rack. It would probably be a little easier to get these things to slide if I cleaned out the grooves. They're a little rusty because the roof of the building leaks like a sieve. As a matter of fact, on the really rainy days, a scuba tank and flippers become required work attire. And it's on far enough. We'll get the back one on. This groove is a little less rusty, so less of a fight. And before you ask why I don't fix the roof, uh, well, it's very expensive, but even more important than that, it's not my building, it's not my problem. We can throw our clamps on the other side. The side's a little less rusty. They slide like they're supposed to. Must be higher ground stays out of the water. Slide our clamp out a little bit closer to the pinch weld and we'll move on to the rear. These things do weigh I think about 50 pounds which isn't heavy but it's very awkward working under the car. And we raise our lift up so our clamps slide over our pinch weld and then we can pull our stands out of here. We can start tightening up all the bolts, hold our clamps on. And now our Lexus is securely fastened to our frame rack. So we can start doing some work. We'll start by getting it ready to put our door up here so we can see how everything fits. We're gonna change these hinges with used hinges just because I'm pretty sure these are bent. I know the bottom one is for sure. And that front door is getting quite annoying. So we're gonna have to go find ourselves a door check. So we'll attach our door check to the front wheel. And now the door is less annoying. So we'll set the rear door up here. We'll latch the back of it and the striker. And then we can start our bolts in the front. Because the hinges are still on the door, they are adjustable where it mounts to the B pillar. Once we get the hinges set up where they belong, we can just unbolt the door and leave the hinges on. That side of the hinge is self-aligning. We're just going to see how close this B-pillar is, if it moved at all. It's the door latched, and the bolt holes lined up. I'm thinking it might be in the right spot. Slide it forward to get our gap right, and move it up a little bit. We got it where we think we want it. We'll go ahead and tighten it up. I'm trying to get the old marks on the hinges lined up. That'll give us a starting point. We can move it from there if we have to. And if it lines up with the old marks from the old hinge, uh, chances are our pillar is in the right spot. According to the measurements, everything's in the right spot, but test fitting the parts is always the best way to make sure. Gap is looking okay. So now we'll tighten up the bottom. Need to move it up a little bit though, because it will drop down. We'll just take it off the latch, lift up on it a little bit, tighten it down. Then the weight of the door hanging on the hinges, we'll put it in just about the right spot. I think we got it right. The door closes nice. So does our front door. All of our gaps are right. So that means that our B-pillar didn't move at all. All the damage was just in the door and that dog leg. So it looks like we're done here. We're just gonna get five gallons of Bondo, Bondo up that dog leg. Or do we use ramen now? Maybe bricks? 
what's the new, what's the new trend now? I lose track. In the interest of not becoming the next viral TikTok video, uh, I'm going to do this the right way. So we'll pull our wheel off of here. Then we're going to pull our wheel liner off. And it's held on by about 600 different little nuts. Because I really want to make sure that that wasn't coming out of there. And it's also carpeted. Insert rant here. We gotta pull it off the studs. Kind of gets caught in there. And there's a couple clips in the back. And since I don't want to break them, we just kind of peel it down. We can get to the back of the clip. And we can squeeze the tabs on it and pop them out of there. And save them. Because I'm poor. And I can't afford new plastic clips. Now we can wheel our ram in here. want it to go as a mind of its own. So I have to lift down a little bit slowly. This be just the right height. Now it'll slide all the way on there. There's a little block in the back so you twist it and it's got a wedge in there. And we'll just tighten up the wedge. Give it a little tap 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 a -roo. Now we're going to pull the rear door back off because it's going to be in our way when we try to pull on this and work on it. And this is not going to be the last time we're taking this door off. So we're going to leave the hinges on the pillar. We'll just unbolt the hinges from the door. Makes it a lot easier to take on and off and realign. And just open up the handle and go set the door off somewhere where I hopefully won't smash it with something. We can slip our clamp back here. Pull out the dog leg. This is specifically designed to pull out the wheel openings. And if you need one, they're available on my Amazon store. Links in the description. It just sets in there. And we can start pulling it out. We make a couple different sizes of these, and they have a different curve to them. So if you flip around the other way, it's less curved. But this is the one that fit the best down there. So with a little tension on it, we'll start hammering out some of the kinks. Just trying to get it close. We're going to end up cutting out the outer panel anyway. We want to get the inner panel about where it belongs. Move it up a little bit, pull a little more up here. We'll hammer our seam a little flatter. And then slide our clamp out of there. Now we can grind off our paint on our dog leg here. We're going to put another clamp so we can pull on the outside, but these are going to weld on there. So we need to clean off our paint so we can get something to weld to. We'll weld our tabs on there for our clamp. A little controlled burn going on there. And then we can just start pulling until we tear it out of the quarter. And it doesn't take much made out of pladonium. With a little tension on there, we can hammer out the inside edges. All the curves have a lot more curve than they're supposed to. So when you're pulling out on it and you hammer it down, they pretty much straighten out. You need to weld the clamp a little higher to get the rest of it out. Tab just welds on and then Clamp slides over it. They do come in different widths. But I only need a little tab for it, so. And if I use a bigger tab, it just means I have to cut more of it off when I go to remove it. And these are reusable. Really you just keep cutting them off and they just get shorter and shorter until you can't fit the clamp over them and then it's time to get rid of them. Toss them in the pile. So I'll hammer out a little bit more on the inside. With each tap of the hammer, with the tension on there, it actually pulls it out a little bit. If I were just to pull it, I'd probably just rip that clamp right out of the quarter panel. I am literally beating the money out of this car. Might be my only profit on this build. You guessed it. It's time to put our door back up and see how our dog leg fits now that we've pulled it out. See if we went far enough, or we have to go a little bit more. 
back of it. We don't have to take those tabs off that we welded on. We just bent them out of the way a little bit. We'll start our bolts. And then run them in there. It'll line itself back up. Still closes okay. The gaps are still good. A couple little dents here. The bodywork gnome can take care of those. We're not going to worry about getting that piece too close. We could pull it a little bit more, but we're going to cut it off anyway. Everything else is where it belongs. So I think we're going to call that good. Now I'm back after a quick costume change to, uh, guess what? Remove the door. I put on a long sleeve shirt because I have a little grinding to do and I don't want the sparks to hurt the sensitive skin of the safety experts that tell me I need to wear a long sleeve shirt to do this. And because the shop is a balmy 45 degrees. Now with the door out of our way and our welding blankets up so we don't have to answer to fire marshal bill, we can start grinding out all of our spot welds. Of course, if we were using a belt sander instead of a die grinder, we wouldn't have all those sparks, but then the tool experts would win. And I'm not made of money. The die grinder is much more efficient and cheaper to use. So that's what I'm going with. We need to cut this tab off of here. It's folded over to the other side and welded all the way through. So we'll just cut the top of it and then grind the back side. That way we won't have a hole drilled all the way through. Get some more spot welds. And that looks like about as far as we're going to go. So I laid out a piece of masking tape in an effort to get this cut to resemble somewhat of a straight cut. And we're just going to cut along the top of it. It's basically just an arbitrary space. I try to pick the thinnest area so that there's the least amount of bondo. Because when you put the seams together, you're always going to have a little bondo where that seam is joined. We don't want to cut all the way through the bottom. There is a panel right underneath it. We're just cutting through the first layer. Let's see you guys do that with a belt sander. Now we're just going to cut this part off just so we can get to the inside. This isn't going to be our final cut. I just want to make this piece a little bit smaller. So I'll cut a slot in there and cut the bottom. I don't want to cut through the panel underneath. So we got to cut just the outside panel. And then we can cut a slot in there, break out our favorite tool, and we'll finish cutting the rest of this. There's nothing inside that panel, so we don't have to worry about cutting what's underneath it. And we'll get our scraper in there and start breaking these spot welds out. Make sure you use the wrong hammer just to drive the tool experts nuts. That right, goes good with the wrong scraper. Breaking all of our spot welds loose. I like using this little scraper, painters. Well, apparently it's like a six in one tool because it's also used for breaking spot welds. But it's a lot thinner than the actual breaker. It doesn't distort the panels as much. And I missed a couple spot welds that are underneath the sill plate. So we'll grind those out of there. Then we'll grab our air chisel slash pry bar, pry this out of the way. Look away, snap-on dealer. And we'll pull this piece off here. Look, safety experts, no gloves. Toss that in the pile. I'm going to play body man for a little bit. We're going to hammer and dolly this wheelhouse to get the curve back in it. Get it straight where it's supposed to be straight. So I spent a little time straightening it. Not going to hurt anything to straighten out the little wrinkles that were in there. This is the important piece. That's high strength steel. Luckily, it completely missed that piece. Not that it's that big of a deal, we can just change it. It only goes right here, across the bottom, but my parts car is a little rusty, so I'd prefer to use the original if I could. Uh, if we were to try to replace this, this wheelhouse goes all the way around. We'd have to pull the quarter off, goes up here. It's a lot of work. And there's also a piece up here that welds to it, so just straightening it out, not gonna hurt anything. Still just as strong. 
Now we'll just put our piece over it, make sure it all fits, and keep going. Got to cut some more parts off. So now we can cut the rest of this piece that we're going to replace off. You got to pull the hinge off because it's over the top of that piece. And there's a weld right behind it. We'll grind that weld out of there. We got our tape lines where we're going to try to make a straight line. And hopefully that's where we're going to put it in. Now we can get our breaker in there, knock these spot welds loose. Work our way all the way around. And hopefully our piece comes off of here. It is glued on there, so. Pile. Toss that in the pile. And then pick it right back up out of the pile. And we cut the center out of it so it would lay flat over our new piece. I clamped it on, lining up all the little indents in it. And then I'm going to scribe my lines where I'm going to cut it. This will give me an exact cut. I don't have to measure anything. Just lay those pieces over. They make little templates. And pretty soon they're going to make little backings. We have our scribe lines on there. Now we can start cutting on our lines. A lot of people ask why I don't just use a marker. Uh, the scribe line is very thin, the width of that pick, so I know exactly where the line is. If I use a marker, the felt tip is going to make a thicker line on it, and it's harder to tell exactly where I want to cut. Since I want to achieve about a 2 millimeter seam in there, I don't want to have a felt tip that's about 3 millimeters wide, because that's going to really mess things up and make it harder. So we cut our first piece off, and we'll cut our second piece off. Right through the sticker. And almost drop it on the floor. Would have meant some more body work, but body work no. And now we can cut the back of our dog leg. We just trimmed all the crunched parts off the bottom so that we could just put a little piece on there to get our line right, just like we did with the other two. And then we clamp it up, it helps hold it in place while you're drawing lines. You can hold it in there, but sometimes it does move. Once we get it marked, we cut our line out. And then we'll clean up the edges. Now we're going to head over to the car and we're going to clean up all of our welds. I see a lot of people skip this step and it makes your welds that much harder and uh, a little more porous. So we'll get rid of all the paint that's on there. Make sure we get a nice clean surface to weld to. And we have to grind that little tab off the back side there that we didn't grind off before. A little more spot welds. This side looks good. Now we gotta do the same thing on our piece. Grind the back side. Then we'll flip it over and we're going to grind the front. Now we're going to put our weld through primer on the bare metal mating surfaces. Basically just the part that's getting put together. We don't have to put it on the other side. I did mask off the other part of this dog leg here because that's going to be bare metal. That's where our bonding adhesive is going to go. Put a little more weld through primer on our seam. That's going to overlap our backing. And we can pull our tape off of it. Kind of make a mess. Just get the little edge of it that's going to be welded. So we have all our weld through primer on there, put some self etching primer there, we're on that spot we're never going to see, and over there where the factory didn't. Uh, we're going to have to grind this part right here to put our glue on there, but we're going to take it off the frame rack right now, put it back on its wheels. So our car's back on all fours, so let's throw this piece up here. Fit the door, if everything fits, all our gaps are right and everything lines up. We'll pull it apart one last time, put all of our glue and adhesive and everything in there. 
put it up and weld it. Our weld through primer is all dry on this piece, so we can throw it up there. I could have waited and put the weld through primer on when I was putting it up for the last time instead of doing it for the dry fit, but I like to get it out of the way so I don't forget it. So we'll clamp the wheel opening in the back, and then we're going to put that lower hinge on. That's going to hold our piece in place since it bolts through it. We don't want to put any clamps in our door opening because we're going to need to close the doors. Put our weather stripping back on there because the weather stripping will change the way the door closes. And if that piece is too far out, and the weather stripping is smashed in there, you'll have a door that's hard to close. And it's better to find out now than later. I wander around the shop looking for where I put the door down. And we'll lift it up on our door stand. Match the back of it. And put our bolts in the front. Start with the top one, it's always the easiest. And we can run them all in there. Should be lined up. Door closes nice, our gaps are nice. And because the internet has trust issues, I will show you. The gaps indeed are nice. Just like they're supposed to be. The color is a little off. Blendable match. We do have to move the bottom of the fender back a little bit to close up our gap at the bottom. Somebody's been here before. It's easy to just loosen up the bolts and slide it back. So. You might think this is the last time I'm taking this door off, but I can assure you, it is not. Everything fits so nice, it's almost a shame to pull it back apart again, but in order to do it right, that's what we gotta do. We'll pull our door off, and we'll pull our little hinge off. Then we can pull this piece out of here. Now we put our glue in the rear dog leg, that's a that little black strip. And we put our foam on the back side of this piece that will line up with those two little plastic pieces on either side of the B-pillar. The foam, I have about 15 minutes of working time. The glue, I have about 90 minutes, I think. So we need to get it in place in a hurry. So we're line everything up, and then we're going to clamp it up. Because once that foam starts expanding, it's going to want to push this thing out. So we're going to make sure we got it where we want it. bolts in for our hinge. That'll hold it in place. We'll have to pull that hinge back off to weld the weld that's behind it. But for right now, it'll be just fine. Got it all clamped up so we can start welding. We're going to weld randomly all over the place so that we don't get any one spot too hot, especially those seams. Just keep moving around. Go back and do a little more of the seam and do some more spot welds and finish off the seam. It'd be nice if it was a little thicker and you just weld straight through, but you can. So I finished welding everything up and the grinding gnome came in here and ground everything down. I put the hinge on, now we're gonna throw our door back up here, uh, only so that the bodywork gnome can do his work here. We wanna make sure that that door gap is nice and that he doesn't straighten it out and we put the door on and our gap gets narrower or wider or something like that. So if the door is on there, you can check it as he goes. Uh, that's why we're not gonna do it with the door off. Then we'll pull the door up again because we haven't done it enough and they can do the body work in here and up here and get it all painted. So let's get the door on. So we have our door on our door stand. We'll latch the back of it. Okay, we're gonna try to latch the back of it. This is not the time we want to drop it on the floor. And we can put our bolts in the front. You know how this goes. We've already done it, I don't know, what, four times? We 
do have to lift up on the door to get the bolt started because it wants to sag down. And I haven't driven the top bolt in enough to get the shoulder to contact the hinge. So once we tighten it up, the shoulders will line everything up for us. Make sure our door still opens and closes like it's supposed to. In addition to being able to get the gap right back here, I want to make sure that everything else still fit where it was supposed to, that nothing changed while I welded it up because if I do have to fix it, it would suck now, but it would suck even worse when I got to tell the painter I got to mess up his paint. So everything's back where it belongs, nothing moved. Didn't think it would, this isn't structural, but you do want to have it on the ground because there is some deflection in the body and we don't want to line everything up and then put it back on the ground and then it's wrong. So this way, everything's good because hopefully whoever buys this car is gonna be looking at it when all four wheels are on the ground. Looks like everything is still good. So he can do his work here and I will see you guys after he's done and maybe it's time to do some more work. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you when they've done their work. I don't ever smoke up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever smoke up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement.